everyone, I am Tristy and thanks for tuning in. So a question that a lot of us have before applying for higher education is that what would be the experience like? Would it be something that I like? Trust me, when I was looking at universities for Mastery in Finance, I looked for similar videos and experiences. You can find a ton of videos online highlighting how beautiful the campuses are and the amazing amenities, but it's really hard to find a student's first-hand account. So today I'll try to give you a picture of what Master in Finance at Princeton looks like and then we'll have a special guest over to share his experience. When I moved to the US, it was my first time taking a 20 hours long flight and that too alone. As everyone who is new to our country, I had my own apprehensions. But US has been really welcoming. Everyone is so nice and courteous. Within a week of landing in the States, I was all set in my dorm room. I met my brilliant classmates and we even began with the two-week math and career boot camp. At Princeton's FN, every year we have a batch of 25-30 people from all across the globe. And I firsthand saw the benefits of being part of such a diverse class. And I saw my own perspective broaden. If you're thinking of applying for masters, one of the things that you read in detail is the curriculum. Is education really worth that expensive tuition fee? My answer for Princeton? Yes. Here's why. So I went to one of the best schools for undergrad in India, IIT Delhi. I am beyond grateful. It has helped me as a great springboard to put me where I am today. But unlike my time at IIT Delhi, at Princeton, I have never felt like missing one single class. I know it sounds too good to be true, but believe me, if learning courses by the world's greatest professors, industry experts, is something that drives you, then every day at Princeton is worth it. Having said that, you'll be busy with coursework every day. The way classes are structured at Princeton, every course has weekly or bi-weekly submissions. However, as you go through the stress of these submissions, you're never alone. You always have your classmates to help you. As collaboration among students is generally appreciated by most professors, with an obvious catch. In the end, you have to submit your own individual work. Okay, so let's now dive deep into how my MFIN course was structured. So the course spans over two years, which is equivalent to four semesters. A great thing about doing a two-year program over those one-year fast-track programs is that you, you get a summer at the end of the first year. So you get to do a great summer internship, get a flavor of what it is to work in the US, and in most cases, also convert that summer internship into a full-time offer. So coming back to the course requirements, we have to finish 16 courses in 2 years which averages to 4 per semester. This allows you to give your best at every course. So out of the 16 courses, 5 are core and everyone has to finish those and the rest 11 are electives and we have a wide wide range of courses to choose from. I love this flexibility of our program. Every student can tailor his or her courses according to their own interests. I ended up doing courses ranging from learning about Asian capital markets to qualitative data analysis to high frequency trading. And you also have the option to write a master thesis if you're interested. Princeton has a beautiful campus. It was 20 minutes walk from my dorm to the main campus area and I used to love it every day. We also have a beautiful dining hall right next to our dorm and I quickly got used to American food. There are a lot of things to do on campus. I even joined an evening yoga class myself. Our dorm used to have social art every Friday, which was a great opportunity to meet fellow students. And my favorite part about living in Princeton, our on-campus theater. I watched so many great performances there. Let's shift gears to talk about career opportunities now. As I mentioned, my program at Princeton was two years long. I got the chance to intern at Barclays during the summer. From my experience, getting a good internship at, in the US depends a lot on networking right. You have a great set of resources, but you have to actively keep an eye out for the right opportunities. In fact, I was on a lookout even before I landed in the States. The work of studying at a great university such as Princeton is the absolute amazing alumni network. In fact, my resume for my Barclays interview was picked up by one of the MPIN alumni. The field of finance is vast and so are the career opportunities after it. But since MFIN at Princeton is more on the technical side, a lot of students go for quantitative roles. Some of the common career choices are a quantitative researcher at a hedge fund, a trader at a bank or a high frequency trading firm, a quantitative researcher at a bank, and even fintech related roles. To make this a bit more interesting, I've decided to invite one of my batchmates today, Utsa. 
He finished his undergrad from Oxford and he majored in maths and computer science and he'll soon be joining a startup in San Francisco. Uh, so, hi Utsav, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you for having me over. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, we're graduating soon this Friday and it's almost all over now. So, if you have to summarize your time at Princeton, what would you say? Yeah, so one of the most striking parts of the program was the breadth of the courses that we were able to take. So we had the yeah. financial engineering oriented classes such as asset pricing, stochastic calculus, but we could also explore classes such as information security or high frequency trading. And I believe that I came out knowing a lot, a lot from different fields uh, without having to sacrifice on the core of the class of the program itself. Yeah, definitely. Like I definitely agree with you on this. Uh, but yeah, like you are now going for a startup in San Francisco in the fintech space. So how did you like to figure out that this is something that you like and obviously like making the big decision to move to San Francisco? Yeah, so uh, my background was in computer science. So despite my background, I came to Princeton with an open mind about what stream I, want, I wanted to take and apply to all kinds of firms like hedge funds, banks, everything. But I found that the uh, data science and financial technology stream that the program had was more appealing to me. Also found that um, there's a certain particular type of firms that I enjoyed interviewing more at. So uh, yeah, while it is true that most people from my class are ending up on Wall Street or maybe the foreign equivalents of Wall Street, uh, there's a growing number of uh, alumni from the program itself who are working in the fintech space. Um, I'm sure you must have noticed it as well that there's a concerted push in the program to increase the number of fintech oriented courses being offered, the talks being offered, uh, the kind of corporate affiliates that are being signed up recently. So I think, uh, well, I hope mainly that the number of people in fintech grows from the program. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, good luck to you for like moving to San Francisco. Uh, and also like our last semester was disrupted. Like we did all the courses online towards the end of it. So like probably for next batch as well, like classes might start online. So from your experience, do you have any tips for like students who would do that? So the two major changes I noticed were the lack of immersion we had and uh, the stagnant learning environment. So with regards to immersion, I found that online learning was very different from in-person teaching. Uh, here, you're focusing mainly on a tiny screen, so it's very easy to get distracted. And like, so I try to take more notes, uh, more copious notes, uh, with the assumption that the lectures aren't being recorded. I also hid away, obviously I hid away my phone, but I also hid away the coursework uh, from other classes because it was very easy to just like look away, look at some coursework and then just get lost thinking about some other work and not focus on the lecture itself. Yeah. And the other major issue I felt was a problem was that there was not much change of scenery. Where contrary to normal, where you're just moving around between classes, your lecture ends, you take a break, you talk to your friends and then you go to the next, next lecture or you come back home. Yeah. Uh, here at the mid your classes end, you can directly take your next homework. And I felt like by doing that, I was getting burnt out a lot in the initial few weeks. So I, as I mentioned, I hid the coursework away. Uh, I cleaned up my room and I reorganized it such that there was this one nice armchair that I used just to relax after my classes ended. Yeah. So I think those were the two yeah. major things that I found worked best for me. I mean, like those are some great tips. I wish I used them. If you had the chance to like maybe relive all of this again, what would you have done differently? Uh, so I think something that about, uh, we discussed within the program as well is how much we ended up sticking socially to the Emfin Circle. So something I would have done more is explore a lot more different talks across the campus, uh, especially the cross-departmental ones. I think uh, I personally did not realize what a treasure trove of resources we had available on Princeton quite late into the uh, program. Uh, also, one thing I would like to do as well is like spend more time with diff at different events in the town itself so that I have an affinity to Princeton, the town, and not just Princeton, the university. Yeah, I have something exciting planned for you next. It's a lightning round. So you have to like answer in a word or in, sen in a sentence. So, okay, let's start with it. So what's your favorite thing about Princeton? Buildings. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, what did you dislike about Princeton? Oh, food. <laughs> yeah, being a vegetarian, I can imagine, definitely. Um, which was your favorite course that you took? Either ELE 535 machine learning or convex optimization. Mm. So what's your favorite restaurant, Princeton? Chimney yeah. Chimney. Okay, next is like, which one would you choose rather among the two? So you have to like pick one. So US or UK? US for now. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. This the next one is a bit tough as well. New York or San Francisco? San Francisco, but the New York pizza. Okay. Oh, uh, so are the Princeton colors orange or black? Orange. Mm, orange is the new black. <laughs> okay. So last one, Princeton or Oxford? Mm. <laughs> tough. Uh. <laughs> Princeton, Princeton for now. <laughs> okay, thank you. It means a lot. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us today and like giving us all these useful tips and ideas. Thank you so much and wish you good luck for your future. And um, thank you so much for having me over. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please do subscribe to my channel.